We name things: a tree, a cup, a box, a house, and with a name, a word, an image appears. A learned image, a primitive. Yet, among all the things belonging to the category box, it is a commonly held assumption that it, the word, refers to an article or object that is able to contain things, a container. We can remember the consternation of audiences. When John Cage presented four minutes and twenty seconds of silence as a musical performance, or the fuss over the urinal that Duchamp presented as art, and what of the art linguistic contradiction of George Orwell's 1984? Is the bathroom in Eisenman House Ten a place in which to sleep? Or to suffer endless insomniac nightmares. For much of the past century, there have been a succession of attempts to extend the definition of architecture, to reinvent its form, its purpose, its technology, even its most important function: that of giving shelter. There were all manner of tents and decorated sheds, appliances and pavilion that gave rise to a breadth of theories, anti-theories and manifestos. But the basic idea of shelter, even if only a mist, seemed to be secure. Consider the proposition. That a house is a machine for living, house or machine. One might have thought these to be contradictory, even mutually exclusive. Rhetorically, the ideas attack one another, and it is hard, if not impossible, to find the machineness in the built example, which, minus the description. Inevitably, seem to be white boxes rather than the mechanism and apparatus we associate with a machine. In the Japanese context, a house was traditionally composed of sliding papers and straw mats, with a minimum of furnishings, an inspiration for generation of case study architect, and arguably the inspiration maybe for Miss. Farnsworth House and Johnson Glass House, which succeeded it. More recently, a parade of houses: House H, House K, House N, House N A, all confirm the ambiguity of the term, the longing to bring together natural form and the man-made. To reconcile the familiar, the familiar with the ethereal. Coming upon these extremes, one is confounded, one is challenged. As I was one afternoon in the Omote Santo district, full of miniature streets and clusters of narrow buildings, to come upon a pile-up of glass cubes, each somewhat different from the other. Outlined by delicate white frames, and connected by fragile white stairs, the whole seeming to melt into the surrounding village scape. Is that someone's house? Do they sleep on those floating planes? One could make out translucent curtain and traces of what might be bedding or colored fabrics, which confirmed that it was indeed a house here. In the mixed mass of shop, cafes, and boutique, offering nothing but transparency to the passerby, and so, with more challenges to the idea of house or pavilion or gallery, we come to the proposition of tonight's guest. 
Is it the burden of preconception which demands a second look? Or is it the modern affliction? The choice to look without expectation, as Wittgenstein argued, we should have to be able to think what cannot be thought. And likewise, tonight, we should have to be able to see what cannot be seen. On his design philosophy, in relationship to two recent projects, the Serpentine Pavilion in London and House K in Hyogo, Su Fujimoto states, sometimes it is quite exciting to reinvent architecture itself. Please welcome Su Fujimoto. Good evening. Uh, I'm Su Fujimoto. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this really exciting place. And thank you very much for taking your precious time. I've heard this time is the last moment of the semester. So yeah, most of the students is very, very busy and uh, how to say, almost get panic and uh, something like that. So I'm very happy to see uh, many students take time, take relax to, to see uh, my email lecture. I hope you to enjoy. It's only one hour, so it's, it's not taking a long time. And uh, yeah, if, if you get sleepy, it's, it's OK to sleep. <laughs> but uh, hopefully, yeah, I, I like to make it more, how to say, awakened. Anyway, uh, yeah, today I like to talk about some of my projects. But uh, first of all, I like to talk about my background. Uh, this is my background. I was born in Hokkaido. It's a northern island of Japan. It's really like a nature field, full of nature. And my house was in the middle of the nature. So I was grown up and play around in the, like in the forest. And then when I come to the university, I yeah, moved to Tokyo. It's a really crazy, artificial, ugly place. And then somehow I felt really comfortable even in Tokyo situation. But I didn't know why at the, the very beginning. And then years later, I, after I learned uh, architecture, one day I found out the situation or the space in Tokyo and space in Hokkaido nature space are quite similar. Why? Because, yeah, as you see in Tokyo, you will be surrounded, you are surrounded by many small pieces of the artificial uh, things. So it's like a cozy feelings and protected feelings. And in the forest, you will see, of course, you are surrounded by many small branches, leaves, and the trees. So you will be protected in really cozy situations. So one, in Tokyo, surrounded by really artificial, ugly things. And in the nature, you will be surrounded by the beautiful nature things. But the whole situation is very similar. The scales and the how the space are composed are quite similar. And then I realized, of course, one nature and one artificial things. But both of, in both cases, it is possible to say that the space are quite similar. And we could, then we could integrate, or we could think nature and architecture as equal things, try to how to say, treat equal things to create our living environment. That was the very, very starting point in my background of my architecture thinking. And from that on, I try to think about architecture, not only just an architecture, but the more like a wider meanings of the living environment mixed with the nature things and architecture things together to create uh, something new. That was the very basic, basic things of my architecture thinking. And today I'd like to talk about not only the relationship between nature and architecture, but sometimes, of course, relates to outside and inside, or the simplicity and complexity, or some other things, furniture and architecture. That kind of, a, how to say, opposite things meet together or melting together to create new quality. That is the really basic flow of my, of my architecture thinking. And this Serpentine Pavilion last year is showing clearly that kind of, a, how to say, many different kinds of a opposite things uh, coming together, melting together to create 
positively ambiguous, ambiguous spaces. And as you know, yeah, this Serpentine Pavidium series yeah, for, is for about 13, 14 years. They have been doing the one year, one architects, and only for summertime. It's four month, five month uh, temporary pavidium. And the basic programs is cafe. So, yeah, it's uh, like this, to take a cafe and uh, to have a relax. But as you see, it's in the middle of the park. It's in the middle of the Hyde Park. So not only for cafe, but people just walk by and uh, stay there to have a rest, to relax, to have a chat. So program-wise, the requirement is to create a space for people to behave in a very different way. Just not only just sit on, but uh, sleep or lying on, or to group together, or be here alone, be there with the couples or something like that. So such kind of a varieties of the activities uh, was the one of the starting point. And another conditions, another requirement, another condition was these beautiful surroundings. It's surrounded by beautiful trees, beautiful greens. So how to do with such kind of a relationships between the artificial pavilions and uh, and surroundings, natures. So that's two point, the various activities uh, of the people and the beautiful surroundings was the starting point. And what we did, yeah, this is the site in front of the Serpentine uh, Contemporary Art Gallery. They have a site and this is every year, this is the place. And what we created was this. It's a made by really thin steel uh, pipe. It's two centimeter, so it's something like this, to make a grid, thousands of the grids. And each grid size is a 40 centimeter, something like this, and the sometimes a double size 80 centimeter uh, to combine them together to create like a, like a, how to say, like a huge space frame. No walls, no roofs, no columns. Yeah, of course, thousands of columns, but uh, just, <laughs> just like a cloud, like a structures. And some of the areas, yeah, we put the glass surface on, on it. So you can sit on or you can step on, walk around, going up and down. And we put the, the transparent disks like a, as a roof. It is not the perfect roof, but uh, it's a, like a tiling uh, circular disks uh, to protect from the rain. And uh, yeah, as you see, this is all made by the steel bar, steel pipes. So it's everything is straight and 90 degrees and the grids, so really super artificial order. But the, as a result, finally, it seems really like a cloud or a really soft impressions. So in here, yeah, we could create strange or interesting or nice mixtures of such kind of a straightness and the softness or artificial, really classical 90 degree order and really complexity of the, the nature mixed together. And here again, yeah, we put the glass surfaces so yeah, people can sit on, but it seems more like, a, how to say, people are floating on the cloud. And then the space are inside so you will see people behind it, but it, it's, very difficult to see where is inside and where is outside it's because it's transparent or translucent and some of the areas really getting really really transparent and some of the area because of the densities it's really translucent or getting more opaque and the process was very exciting because yeah it was very short period the last Sorry, not uh, two years ago. At the end of the November, I got a got an invitation and went to London to meet with the the director. And she was the the name is Julia Julia Painton Jones, and she's quite how to say charming and powerful and uh, so energetic. But she said, "We are you have only one month to think about the idea phase, conceptual phase, and then another one month to make the drawings for the permissions, and then." another one month for the detailed design, and then you have to start construction. It's quite a short period, so we only had one month to think about such kind of a, how to say, really big opportunity for us, because 
this pavilion series has been like a dream for the young architects. And, uh, but once you get it, you only have one month. It's a bit uh, tricky situation, but anyway, yeah, okay, I, I will do that. And then, one week later, I made a sketch, maybe that was three options, something, and I sent it and they, to make a, the phone call uh, discussion about that. And then, the Julia says, no, this is not the Serpentine Pavilion. But why? This is what, what I like to do. No. Why? This is too much Fujimoto-like. Okay. <laughs> it's... <laughs> I'm Fujimoto, and you appointed Fujimoto, but uh, you don't like uh, Fujimoto-like uh, things. <laughs> OK. So next week, try to make something quite different and send it to the, by email, and then and again make a phone call. And the Julia says, no. This is not the, the things I like to have. Why? This is too much not Fujimoto-like. <laughs> OK, so you don't like Fujimoto, and you don't like uh, not Fujimoto, and maybe something between Fujimoto and uh, not Fujimoto would be the, the things. <laughs> and then, again, of course, I understand what she, what she talked. The sh Serpentine Pavilion should be something from the architect's history, but at the same time, should be something new. So it is on the edge, should be on the edge. So try, try hard, many hard to, to create. And finally, as we send the sketches or the CAD drawings of the final ideas. But as you see, this one is really so many lines and no clear boundaries of the inside and outside, no clear, how to say, shape of the plan. So she said, okay, where's the, where's the plan? Where's the wall? And where is the inside? And which, one, which part is the area of the pavilion? I don't see anything on the drawings. So I, I have to explain, yeah, this is such kind of a blurness and ambiguity is uh, the important point. And, uh, this is the plan. This, this many, many line is the plan. But uh, she said, you have to show clearly where is the, the line of the inside and outside. And uh, there is no clear line inside and outside. This is blurring the point. This is the point or something like that. Finally, she said, OK, I will come to Tokyo to see what it is. And then she came. One week later, that was the New Year's Day, or the New Year Eve, New Year's Day. So yeah, in Japan, in, in the world, through all over the world, everybody has a break. But uh, she said she would come on that day. So we couldn't get any holiday just to make the models and the drawings for her. But fine, yeah, it's like, a, like today for you. It's a la really <laughs> last moment. But finally, she came, and once she saw the model and the drawings, she understood, and, wow, this is, this is it. So, okay, so let's go forward. So she is quite a fantastic person, because once she understands, then she completely pushed uh, our ideas forward. And of course, the team of the Serpentine engineers and the construction team was quite nice. So after that, of course, it was really tough period for the permissions, something, something, but uh, the whole thing was very powerful. And uh, yeah, as I said, this was the, the program was the cafe. So I tried to create such kind of a, how to say, landscape-like place, which allow people to behave as they like, not just only sit on the table or sit on the chair, but the, to choose the place to sit on uh, lying or standing or something like that. So this was the, the model in the middle. It's like a, like a Frank Gehry. <laughs> but uh, try to create such kind of architectural landscape by the one surface. But I thought it is blocking this kind of a surface, may, maybe made by the concrete or the steel plates, will block the view to the surroundings or block the relationship between inside and outside. So what to do, how we can go beyond that. And then the idea is to translate, transform all these surfaces into grids came to us. So the final one, of course, made by such a thin many, many grids. But the basic form is starting from, well, starting from these kind of landscape-like things, transformed into the, into the grids. So like that. 
So once transformed into the grids, you couldn't see the shape. But uh, if you are inside or if you are on site, carefully see the trace, the shape. It is like a, like a landscape. And this was the one to 10 scale model because, yeah, as you see, we design the whole pavilion by computer because it is quite complicated. So using the CAD, 3D CAD, and rhinos, and then send it to the engineers in a computer model and then get the, the answers from the computer model. But finally, we understood we don't, we don't know what we are making because in the computer screen, we only see the thousands of the lines but couldn't see the space, couldn't see the depths of the, the areas, distances. And it was very scary things to realize some things that what, what we, don't, we don't see it. So finally, we decided to make the huge physical models. It is made by the wooden stick, two millimeter thickness, really thin, and the four centimeter grids, eight centimeter grids, grew it together one by one to make the thousands of the thousands of the joints. Together with the students, many students, finally we, we did it. And then finally we saw it. And roughly it's it's okay. But it's not perfect. So I myself like a like a trimmer using the the scissor to cut some of the grids or adds one or two grids on some point or something like that to make like uh, make the whole shape, it's like uh, more mysterious. The original one was too simple, too straight. So I try to make it a bit more mysterious. Which one, which people can can understand, but cannot easily understand, like the such kind of between such an on the edge. But finally, it's done. And as you see, it is like a, it has a strange shape. It doesn't have clear shape. Some of the grids sticking out, some of them is coming down. And this is the outside roof where you can walk on it. And around here, you'll have an entrance. So you can walk in, but you, you don't see clearly where to, to come in, but it has uh, an, an entrance. And if you're in, inside, it is something like that. And this is the rather like a landscape-like space uh, how to say, you will see the landscape like stepping areas. So the space is going up and going to the roof and coming down or something like that. So it is continuous, continuous line. Or you will see the floor is going up and then getting to the roof and then coming down like this, like a landscape. So you can see such kind of a frangiri like uh, surfaces are uh, transformed into the grid situations. And then this 40 centimeter areas, yeah, people can sit on, and sometimes the double size, the small size, big size is making the nice differences of the densities. And the very, I think, very interesting point of this structure system is this kind of a changing transparency. It doesn't have any like a clear windows. It doesn't have any clear walls and definition of the walls and the windows, but just the how to say gradient differences, changing of the the transparencies. This area is really transparent because the densities of the structure is very thin. But then around here it's getting more dense, or around here it's getting more dense. Then it is more getting more opaque. So every time the depths of the structures is making the opaqueness and the thinness is transparencies. But once, yeah, you walk on around it and you change your view to look around, then the densities of the structures is changing because depending on your position or depending on which direction you see. So every time the whole transparencies of the space is like a fluid and changing. So it is not like a static structures, but every time it's the cloud-like space is moving around you according to how you walk or which direction you see or something like that. So that kind of a dynamic uh, relationships between inside and outside was quite exciting point. And we chose these rather usual furnitures as an official furnitures because one reason is 
the similar scales of the elements. And another reason is kind of such kind of a slight different shapes could make nice diversities, similar kinds of the elements, similar kinds of the colors, but the slightly different shapes is creating nice, I don't know how to say, different resolutions and something like that. So to try to create the lower part could be more fragmented because finally, of course, the floor is concrete, so it's rather flat. So it, I was afraid it sh could have the big contrast between these kind of a fragmented areas and the flat areas. So the floors should be covered by these furnitures. And f the fortunately, the shadows as well to make such kind of a fragmentation. So finally, the whole space, not only above and not only the side, but the, the under your foot, you will be surrounded by such kind of a fragmented the clusters of the, the scenes. Again, this is the stepping areas. So, yeah, these kind of a landscape make people to start to challenge it or to start to behave in a different way as they like. So even such an old lady try to try to walk up, and sometimes here yeah, you will find some hidden spaces here or over there or something like that. So this space is really fixed. But according to how you react to the space, the functions, different meanings is coming out every time differently. This is the opening lecture. So yeah, in case of this kind of a, how to say, lecture spaces, it's huge volumes of the people, like auditoriums were filled with the peoples. So then you will see the surface of the landscape appears on, on that. And then in the evening, yeah, you will see how. Yeah, this is just a simply light up from the bottom, but the old elements, half real and half virtual, just light up and almost losing the weight of the materials. Everything is made by steel, so it's really heavy, finally. But the impression is getting really light. So in that sense also, yeah, it is between some real things and the virtual uh, things together. And of course, yeah, the whole scales, fragmented scales, is like a furniture scales. Each element of furniture scale, but the whole size of the space is, is more like architecture scales. So it is something between furniture things and architecture things. And the really simple orders, 90 degrees, two sides with the grids, but the whole impression is quite complex. So the contrast of the simplicity and complexities are realized. So in that sense, yeah, as I said, between nature, not only between nature and architectures, but the inside and outside, of course, transparency and opaqueness, or straightness and softness and simplicity, complexity, furniture scales, architecture scales, and the landscape scales, and the uh, materiality, reality, and more like a no material or virtual situations. Such kind of a, every different kinds of a opposite concept are melting together in one point on these pavilions to, to create some new, new qualities of the spaces. So that was the very, of course, in this case, this is, this doesn't have, should not be, should not have the strong exterior walls or no need to have the strong roofs. So that is more like a pavilion uh, requirements. But still, it is opening the possibilities of the, the architectures of the future, I think. So that was really typical examples how we can integrate such kind of a usual, yeah, outside, inside, both of them is quite usual, or the straightness, softness, it's quite usual things. But if once we try to make it together, mix them together, then every different kinds of possibilities is coming out from such a usual opposite point. That is quite exciting point, I think, to see how we can create something new from really fundamental qualities uh, of the architecture. And this is a private house. This is also quite 
kind of a, yeah, unique, strange private house. As you see, this is in the middle of the Tokyo, so the plot is quite small, five meter and uh, eight meter depth. So we gave up to create the big house. Anyway, it is a small house. Try to create the varieties in the house or various different places, various different areas as much as possible. That was the, the concept together with the, the clients. Clients agree with that. Yeah, anyway, we couldn't have big living space. Then we tried to have 10 more, 20 more different areas in the house. Then you could have more choice. That was another kind of a richness of the house. Then we divided the small plots in a smaller pieces. And finally, the size of the floor is almost like a, this one is 1.4 by 1.4. So it's almost like a size of the table. And the biggest one is 2.4 by 2.3 or something like that. So even the biggest one is like a bigger table size. Most of them are like a furniture size. And then we stuck them up to create such a different levels, different areas, and continuity of the spaces. And then finally, it is something like this. So you will see each area is quite small, but you have various different uh, levels. And sometimes two levels are combined together to work as a, how to say, bench and floors, or tables and floors, or something like that. And sometimes this one usually used for the shelves, but if you like, you can walk in and uh, not, could not stand, but uh, sit on it. And then to have some reading spaces or uh, taking a nap space or something like that. So each different areas could work as different rooms sometimes. And if you like, you could see all the separated, fragmented areas as a one space. So if you have 10 friends, then of course, no space in one flat floors for 10, 10 people. But then two people here, one here, another one here, three-dimensionally, you can make a communications. It is a bit strange, but uh, could use the spaces in a three-dimensional way. So in that sense, this house is really <coughs> dynamic. But at the same time, as you see, each floor and the thickness of the columns, it is almost like a five centimeters. So it's something like this. Thinness of the floors, the small size of the staircases, and the size of the windows, size of the furniture, everything is very small, surrounding you to create the proper, comfortable densities. In that sense, yeah, as I talked in the very beginning, it is like, a, like Tokyo. It's like an artificial, small artificial forest. You will be surrounded by such kind of a small pieces to create nice scales. So even though it is almost transparent, but the impression or atmospheres inside of this uh, house is really cozy and surrounded by such a small, your daily staffs and your uh, proper size and human scale things to create the comfortable spaces. So that is another way to create the territories for you, the living environment, not to make the strong walls to block the, the outside, but the half blocking and the half, how to say, taking in, in between inside and outside spaces. And then I like to expand the size of the, the buildings into really huge size. This is in the, this was a competition. And finally, the competition itself uh, stopped so vanished, so it is not realized, but it's really huge uh, competitions. It is in the Middle East to create the one, almost one mile length of the site and the huge scale of the shopping areas designed by one architect. So it's quite unusual for, for, for me and for usual uh, architects, but it was really exciting because <laughs> In such a case, we can, we can expand our imaginations from our usual thinkings to the, how to say, unknown, unknown levels. And this is the Middle East, so it was the first time for me to do something for the Middle East. 
So different climate conditions and different culture background and different scales. That was very exciting how such kind of a basic different conditions expand my imaginations from, from the usual way. And then finally we proposed this kind of a seven, eight towers. It is almost a 100 meter high towers. And on the bottom we have a huge, huge shopping areas. Because we thought about the climate conditions and try to create the nice natural ventilation towers. That was the one of the starting point. So this tower has a void inside to have to get the cool air from the bottom and to the hot air going out from the top. So such kind of a natural ventilation towers was the starting point. And then of course it is a really huge site. So if you make it three levels, it is really flat and nobody can see it. So it was I felt it was pity, so try to make a, such kind of a landmark uh, element using the natural ventilation towers as the landmark towers. And uh, we used these kind of uh, many, many, many grids because I tried to create the sunshade. The whole structures is like a natural sun sunshade. So, yeah, all the buildings are covered by the by the grids, arch shape, but the glass is all set back from the, from the edge. So every structures, the whole structures could work as not only the natural ventilation towers, but the structural sunshade. And then to create the controlled sunlight is coming into the void. And of course, as an experience of the shopping areas, this kind of a huge void rhythm of the void, seven, eight void is appearing after boring shopping areas and again and again and again. So to create such kind of a dynamic experience of the shopping. So that kind of a uh, program things, climate things, and the site conditions and the size of the, the project, we proposed these kind of a rather crazy uh, proposals. But if you carefully see these geometries of the grids, it is almost the same as the serpentine because it's just a repetition of the grids. Of course, in this case, we used the circular shape or arch shape, so it is more like a closer to the cultural uh, background motif. But the basic structures is grid. So in the serpentine case, the whole shape was like a cloud. But in this case, the whole shape is like a void and the towers. So the whole shape is different, but basic structures is the same. But I didn't imagine serpentine grids could expand into such a hundred times bigger scales uh, buildings and could work as a very, very different way, could work as a sun, natural sunshade and to make more complex sunlight, filtered sunlight is coming in. And it looks, it looks nice, I think. And I like, I was surprised how I can make such a big things, but finally I, I like it. Sometimes, yeah, these kind of crazy ideas to put this huge lakes under the, under the void, to have a boat. And uh, of course it's, it's almost like a theme park, but uh, still it's, it's really fantastic things and some of the programs on the upper part so people could walk up in, into the void. So it is really dynamic three-dimensional experiences. It is like that. So it's kind of beautiful shapes and the beautiful or dynamic experiences. And we made 28-0 panels and sent it to the Middle East country and then talk about yeah when to do the presentations, but finally, suddenly, yeah, I got an email that uh, just to say the competition was canceled. So everything stopped and uh, no payment, no nothing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's, yeah, sometimes that's happened. And of course that's pity, but still I feel really happy to have such kind of a crazy starting point to think about or to expand the architecture ideas in a different way. 
And of course, once we made these kind of proposals, for example, like today, yeah, if I show this, and some of you are really interested in, and some of you is really, how to say, has a lot of money, and they'd like to <laughs> realize it. So I welcome the collaborations. <laughs> so anytime, anytime, yeah, you can contact me for, for the realization. Anyway, that kind of a different scales and the different programs, different climate conditions, every time I like to be involved in such kind of a strange situations because the architecture ideas, I don't have strict style or my architectures, but I just have the basic, basic thinkings. And then the climate conditions, programs, and scales make it happen, and sometimes make it explore to somewhere unknown places. And I like to enjoy such kind of a, how to say, unexpected, uh, unexpected situations. And in this case, this is a really, going back to the really small scales, public toilet project. It's like this. It's one of the smallest project I did, and one of the st most strange project. Yeah, you see the toilet, pure toilet, glass box, and the wall. This is the public toilet. And one, only one public toilet. And uh, of course, this is a bit strange, but uh, for me, the public toilet for architects is quite exciting program because it is public, but once you come in, it is really private. So how to deal with such kind of a publicness and the privateness at the same time? That is quite a fundamental question. And the site was rather in the countryside, so surrounded by the nature. So like to open to the natures, but of course you have to close. So how to do with such kind of outside inside problems? It is another really fundamental uh, questions. And of course, yeah, this is outside, it's nature, surrounded by nature and architecture, and inside your extreme nature behavior could happen. So in that case, nature and architecture and another nature's, that kind of a relationship is quite, again, fundamental. So I thought, I got a commission by phone call from my my friend, he's a, like an art director, and uh, he is doing the art city uh, concept on these areas and try to create some different concept of the public toilet. So he phoned me and talked about the smallest public toilet project. And uh, yeah, I just say yes because it sounds very exciting because of such a reasons, really fundamental and a really extreme challenge could happen. So this is really simple strategies. But architectural strategies, this is a glass box toilet and the wall. Wall is something like this. And you have a door. And w once you come in, you can lock the door. So then, <laughs> this whole area is like a, your private garden. Of course, you can do toilet here, or there, or everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> so this is a very simple strategy to create the multiple layers. Usually, if you do architecture, the wall, you make a wall. But the wall has several different functions. Sometimes block the view, and sometimes block the air. So in this case, we divide the function of the walls in two pieces. This big wall is just blocking the view, but not blocking the air. So just blocking the view, but the air flows so around here outside. And this inner wall is not blocking the view, but just blocking the air. So to make an interior space for toilet, but it's really transparent. And if you divide the meaning of the walls in two pieces, then you could have the huge areas as a part of the, your own private inside spaces. You could enjoy the 
bigness of the spaces and a big view to the surroundings, but still you are protected from the view and from the rainfalls and from the wind. So that kind of a, how to say, simple but fundamental strategy is to divide the functions of the walls in two pieces and to create the gap between that and then different experience could happen. So this is the plan. Yeah, this is simple. This is a wall to block the view and the glass box. These are about 20 meters something. So open the door, lock the door, come around here. Of course, if you are really emergency, emergency situations, it's a bit tough because yeah, finally you open the door and you will see 20 more meter more to, <laughs> you have to run. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, hopefully, yeah. And yeah, the wall is really simply made. The made by the wooden piles just sticked into the, into the ground. So it's really quite simple, simple structures. And we kept almost all the existing greens and the trees inside of the site, something like this. And you will see the house. Yeah, but if you uh, Standing around here, you will see it, but if you sit on it, people don't, don't see it. <laughs> and this is the existing trees. And uh, yeah, as I said, this was kind of a, how to say, art event. But of course, this is not the temporary, this is a permanent toilet, but uh, the whole city is doing like an art city like that. And this spring, they did two month uh, like an art event. So many, many people, visitors is coming, not only here, but these kind of a small art installations are spread around through the, through the city. So yeah, many tourists came, uh, especially this toilet, because it's very famous. So many tourists ca came in using the big bus. So not only one bus, but the two, three buses full of the people. So 30 people, 40 people, or hundreds of people come around here. Of course, not to do the toilet, but just to see the toilet. <laughs> so, to make a queue and to, how to say, sit on, take a photos, and another guy sit on and take a photos, <laughs> something like that. But of course, if you have hundreds of people, of course, some of them like to do the, the real toilet. <laughs> and you, you, now you come to the toilet, but you, you couldn't do the toilet because full of the people just taking the photos. <laughs> so finally, the city government decided to put the temporary, two pieces of the temporary toilet behind this toilet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it is a really funny situation. So yeah, I made a toilet, but finally have to put the toilet for the toilet. <laughs> that was the, the things they did. But anyway. So every year in the springtime, the, these uh, green areas is getting more blue flower blooming. So if you like, yeah, this is permanent. So if you like to come uh, and experience this strange toilet, yeah, you, it's, every time it's open. In the springtime, it's really my recommendation. Anyway, so this is a house, private house. And the strategy of this private house is somehow similar to this toilet. To how to do with the wall and try to create the multiple layers of the walls. So this is a small private house for a couple. And then finally it's made by three boxes, big box, and the middle box, and small box with many, many openings. But the, the openings on the big box is uh, like a, just on openings. There's no glass, no windows. So the rain comes in and wind blows. So these areas inside of this big box is outside. And then the middle box, it has a glass. So inside of this middle box is inside, but still outside of this small box. So if you have three box and box and box, the definition of inside and outside is starting to confusing or blurring. Inside of the big box is outside and outside of the middle box. And outside of middle box is inside of the big, big box. Or outside of the small box is 
inside the middle box or something like that. So every time inside and outside is always changing, depend, depends on how or where you like to say this is inside or this is outside. So that was the positive, good point of this project because then you could choose how far you go out and how inside uh, you can protect yourself. You can choose the gradations from outside and inside, not just using the one wall to divide inside and outside, but uh, rather more outside, gradually getting inside and more and more inside, such kind of gradations is happening. And you could choose which gradations, which areas of the gradations is possible or is suitable for your uh, feelings or uh, for your uh, situations. And then this is the place of the inside of the big box and outside of the middle box. This is outside, but surrounded by such a huge big box, so you will feel you are in, the, in your house. So it's like an out, out, uh, outdoor room or something like that. And the whole box is something like this. And from the street, huge box of the concrete, but you will see sky through these boxes, or you will see neighbor's house through these boxes. So concrete box, but it is rather transparent or translucent. And once you step into the big box, inside of the big box, then it is, yeah, we have trees, but covered by the roof with big openings to see the sky. So it's in the middle, in between feelings. And from the very, very inside, this is a small box. And then middle box and big box. So you will see three layers of the walls uh, surrounding you, uh, protecting you. So it's really, really pro protected areas. But still, you have many, many openings. And layers of the openings is creating, the, for example, the skies is in really uh, 10 or 20 fragmented the sky is covering you. So it is, the feeling is really open. So it's in the middle of the, in between, between the protected feelings and the openness, between such a fundamental two aspects of the house. And you would choose, of course, layering of the windows is creating such kind of an openness and closeness. So you could choose this corner is more protected areas, that corner is more open, and of course, different layers. So the combination of the layer railing of the openings and the layering of the walls is creating such a hundreds of the varieties of the different areas in this house. So in case of the house NA, the many, many steps house, we created varieties of the houses by the uh, different levels. But in this case, it's more like more ambiguous. The same areas, but the one step in, then different areas is happening. So you could choose according to your intuitions, how to hide yourself or how to open to the natures or how to open to the sky or something like that. So then, in the usual meaning of the functions, is not here. Of course, you have a dining tables or sofas, but more like a, you would just see the feels of the different gradations of the openness and the closeness. And then you could just follow that kind of gradations by your, by your instincts. And again, yeah, this is the open areas. Outside, now this is finished 2009, 2008, 2009, so five years later now, the trees is getting more bigger, so it's like a real forest inside of your house. So it is really, how to say, clear uh, description of the blurring boundaries. Okay, I have two more projects. This is the library for Art University in Tokyo. And this has, again, the multiple layers of the walls. But in this case, it works not only just, how to say, blurring boundary inside and outside, but the, within the inside areas, it is making the infinite uh, layering or infinite experience of the, how to say, layering field for you to walk around. Yeah, this is the library, so 
everything made by bookshelves, even outside. And I covered outside bookshelf by glass. So from outside, you will see just, wow, huge bookshelves is standing. Must be very, maybe the library. And inside, something like this. All the walls are made by the bookshelves. Of course, it is really, it was very simple ideas. The library is a place for the books. So maybe the fundamental starting point to design library is to start from the bookshelves. So I started from the bookshelves. It's growing like a spiral to make uh, areas for people. And then it's getting bigger and bigger. And finally, something like this. The total floor area is two floors. It's about 6,600 square meters. So it's, it's quite big. And, uh, but the whole space are defined by one continuous bookshelf. And each bookshelf has these kind of openings, like a house N, the previous house. So then you will see another layers of the bookshelves. And then it has also the openings. So you will see another, another, another layers of the spaces behind it. So then the whole impression is like you are in the middle of the bookshelves spaces. But you will see the depths of the spaces, but you don't see completely uh, everything. So you will see some of the pieces behind it. But you just imagine how much extension or how big is the whole space is. So that is the very important point. Expectations, invitations is happening from such a half hidden, half appearing situations. And uh, for the very first competition phase, it was a kind of a conceptual competition. And I make a presentation that I like to make this library like a, the forest of the books. That means of course, a library is a place where we find books, we search books, and we find books. But on the other hand, in the library, I imagine we just walk around for no purpose, for not for searching books, looking for books, but just move, walking around in the middle of the books, like uh, walking around in the forest. And sometimes we will find some unexpected books, or sometimes we will just get on ideas, get on unexpected ideas. That kind of a functions, or not even a functions, but that kind of a experience is really special and precious in the library, I thought. So I try to not only the functional, super functional libraries, but also such kind of a forest-like experiences in these libraries. Then after many, many studies, these kind of many layers with limited openings strategies came to me. Because to create the continuity of the spaces, but not showing everything, is making nice expectations. And then people like to walk to see what is happening behind it, or something like that. That kind of uh, things was behind this uh, plan. And of course, I thought it's really funny or it's really nice to think about such kind of a huge library is made only by one bookshelf. That is not very important things, maybe, but uh, I like such kind of a small, funny ideas. So I try to combine one continuous bookshelf with these kind of a layering strategies. And this is uh, the model. This is a 1 to 20 scale model, so again, it was really tough works to make every, every bookshelf, but it works. So you will see how the spirals is surrounding you. So if you like books, you all are all surrounded by books, and it's like a book heaven for you. And if you don't like book, it's really horrible book hell, and uh, <laughs> you couldn't go out. <laughs> Anyway, so finally, this is a book, continuous bookshelf. So even to outside, the bookshelf is coming out. Now covered by the glass, but if you like to extend the libraries, 
then you can put the roof here, this in between spaces, take out this glass to make the whole areas between, in between these walls as an interior book extension of the libraries. So it is like a Lukovic's uh, infinite growing, growing museum because the spiral shape has such, a, such an aspect. And then inside, you will see this one layers with big openings and then another layers and then outside, but you will see another layers here. So here, there, there, over there, the space are layered infinitely. And here, this is a high ceiling, almost nine meter high, so it's really huge uh, openness. And the main floors of the library is the upstairs, so you go up to this huge auditorium-like staircase. It's an exhibition space, auditorium, multi-purpose space. And then, yeah, I hope you to see these ceilings. This is really special, not the special materials. These are cheap materials, but nicely done because it has a skylight. And then this polycarbonate plastic materials are on the ceiling. So it softens the skylights. It's like a, like a cloud. And then it reflects. Yeah, you will see around here. It reflects the bookshelves. So this is the line of the ceiling, but the impression is the bookshelf is more going up. So the impression of the ceiling is, is really soft and light and almost how to say transparent, translucent, to make the whole impression <coughs> beautiful contrast of the strong bookshelves and the soft cloud-like ceilings. And then here, this is the main area. So you will see how the space is layered with small openings here, there, over there, and over there. And the space itself is like a spiral, so it's curved and vanished. Curved, vanished. So yeah, you, you don't see the space behind the vanishing point. And then again, you like to walk to see what is happening behind it. So that kind of a different types of the vanishing or hidden areas are, are created. And yeah, <laughs> this kind of things happen every time in the university library. Every student likes to sleep. And uh, yeah, but I like this photo very much because she is representing how comfortable this space is. <laughs> so, but yeah, seriously, I, I like to talk about how such a cozy feelings are made by the scales of this library, because it is spiral. So every space are between two walls of the bookshelves. And in this case, it's about 4.5 meter or five meter, something like that. So it's rather like a cozy residential scales. So every area uh, has having such a residential scales. But at the same time, if you are standing in the middle of the library, you will see such kind of a almost infinite spreading around the forest-like spaces. So then, yeah, from these openings, you will see another layers, another layers, another layers, and these bookshelves, maybe this is the end, but you don't know, you couldn't see which one is the end. So if you don't see the end, but if you just see the spreading feelings, the impression of the space is really huge, getting huge. And then walking around, walking around, on every corner, every point, you will see such kind of a many, many layers of the, the bookshelves. So this library, from the form of this spiral shape, it has really a fundamental two different, two opposite scales. One is really residential, cozy scales for people to sleep, or really huge, spreading scales, thousands of the square meters, for people to walk around to find some unknown things. And both of them are quite fundamental for the library experience, I think. So in that sense, it's really basic, but uh, nice strategies to create the diversities of the scales in this library. And in the evening, the inside is getting more, I would say, coming out. Okay, so this is the, the last one. Yeah, this spring, 
uh, we won a competition in south of France to design a housing tower, the collaborating with uh, the French local architects. And uh, this is a city of Montpellier. This is uh, one of the Mediterranean city. So we try to create, yeah, Mediterranean city, Mediterranean climate. So they, even in the winter time, they enjoy outside life. Yeah, just like here, Los Angeles, really good climate and open terrace and open cafe, something like that. So we try to create such kind of a, their traditional life into the contemporary architecture. So what we propose is something like this. It's quite crazy balcony monsters, huge balconies sticking out almost 100 or 200 balconies sticking out, and some of the sunshade is sticking out to create the fields for their outside life, outdoor life. It is like this. So it is uh, almost a 55 meter high, and uh, it has about 100 houses. And each house is not only have one balcony, but two, three balconies is sticking out from one apartment. And then upper part is more longer balconies sticking out. So it is like a pine cone or a pineapple or something like that. And the, yeah, from above. The site is on the river. And uh, the whole shape is like, a, like this. It's a bit strange curved shape because, yeah, this is the site. And uh, on the river, there was the existing green areas. So we try to keep that green areas going through our site. So we make a setback, continue to the, another existing green line. So make such kind of a green belt. And then they have the existing building here. So we try to keep the view from this existing building as much as possible. So we set back this line a bit more so then this kind of a rather strange shape is happening. And of course, the main idea is this balcony things. But if you just put the balconies on the, how to say, rectangular box, it it's, doesn't look nice. We tried in the very early stages of the, the study process. We st studied that. And then we gave up the balcony ideas. But then after this kind of a more carefully careful studies of the volumes. We tried again to put the balconies on this curved shape. And then, this time, it is more harmonized or integrated. Volumes and balconies are not the same, not the different things, but the same things, and integrated as a one form. And I like this idea because the balcony itself is quite, in a sense, usual really usual and traditional things. And the apartment itself is also not so special. It's quite usual things. But if you combine them together in a rather different proportions, different scales, then it is somehow something new, but still connecting to the really fundamental and usual uh, things. And of course, it is really deeply relating to their climate and their lifestyle. So yeah, as I talked, if you encounter with the different climate situations or different cultural background or dif different traditional lifestyle, then that kind of uh, inspirations take our ideas up to some unexpected stage to see the new potentials of the basic ideas. So yeah, in, in this op in this. Uh, proposals, such kind of a many, 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 many things coming together. That kind of a situation is like a somehow Fujimoto-like things, like a serpentine. Many, many, many grids, and finally the whole situation is getting different. And in this case, many, many, many balconies coming together to create the situation different. But still, it is really usual balconies, an usual apartment. So that kind of a combinations is it's very, very exciting. And from the balconies, you will see the Mediterranean seas to the south side or to the northern side. They have a beautiful mountain areas. So yeah, this 
this is the plan by the city government. They like to make kind of iconic buildings, but I, I didn't like to make the architecture shape, strange architecture shape icons. But I like to create more like a icon, as a, how to say, the, their life or their lifestyle coming together uh, to be an icon. Because it is Montpellier and they, they have a really unique and really special lifestyle. So try to create, the group them up to create their icons. Of course, finally it is getting like a crazy shape of the buildings, but I imagine on this, every balcony, they have many, many parcels or the chair, deck chairs or uh, many different kinds of trees and something like that on it to fill up, so hide all the architectural elements, but the only the life is coming out to be more like a, a real, real Montpellier iconic buildings. And now this building is, yeah, the permission, that we will do the permission submission and uh, we will start construction from next summer, maybe. And we will soon start selling the apartment of this <laughs> uh, building. So if you like to have the nice <laughs> apartment, terrace, outdoor life in the south of France, it's, it's on sale. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was talking about such kind of a various different project, but every time the contrast of the opposite things, nature and architecture inside and outside, your simplicity, complexity, furniture, and architecture, and the landscaping uh, things, and the public and private, something like that. And everything, every such an opposite word itself is really usual, fundamental things. But if you, once you, we, try to mix them up, or once we try to find something between two of them, then we have many, many potentials to find out something new, but at the same time, something really fundamental. So that is the things I'm, I feel really exciting, and uh, I uh, try to continue uh, more and more. Thank you very much. Thank you.